It's really hard to get coverage here in the city. There's a lot of foliage, and you can see some of the vertical assets are limited. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be a security camera location over here. Okay. This pole. You see where that yellow tape is there on the pole? Oh, yeah. That means it's designated for, as a camera site. Okay. I think uh, we measured the city, the polygon that we're covering now, or the area of interest is, um, I think, 12 square miles. We cover a fraction of that, probably uh, 30 to 40 percent of that. So the network is really in two different silos. Uh, the first silo is in, in really the main focal point is to provide free broadband for uh, underprivileged students. So there are over 4,000 uh, underprivileged students um, that reside here that were identified during COVID timeline. Um, so the focus of the school district was to identify some of the students that could uh, benefit from free broadband and then uh, build that out as a service to, to provide that for these students if they so choose. When COVID um, became a part of our world here in St. Ray, one of the things we recognized is that for many of our families, um, while great wireless access was had inside of our buildings, when school moved beyond the walls of the classroom and into the homes, uh, we had a significant portion of our population who didn't have the opportunity um, to continue schooling in a reliable manner. We recognized that we needed to provide a way to give students internet access at home. Um, so with that came the project to uh, build a private LTE network. Um, on top of the strong connection that we had with the city of Longmont, um, we were able to, to find a partnership there that not only gave our kids opportunities during COVID, but now beyond COVID, we know that opportunity um, comes from access. And so even beyond the classroom days when we are remote learning because of a snow day, we have students who can now learn um, at any hour of the day, on any day of the week, uh, and bring that learning into their homes because we have a way to give them service. As part of COVID, we definitely saw the issues that the school district was having in connectivity with their students. We actually, one of our city council members is a teacher and she was telling us stories of where she literally went and created a hotspot outside of someone's home so they could do their homework. So we knew there was an issue and as the school district was trying to solve it, obviously um, they don't have the expertise and, and the infrastructure that we had. So it really created a partnership that's the kick off the LTE work. And, and so what we were able to do very quickly, um, and I credit Valerie and Dennis with this, is really create some really aggressive, affordable offers for folks. And we bridge that gap, or part of the gap. But what we were hearing from the school is that there were still folks that didn't have access to internet because they were in areas of the community, primarily rental properties, where we didn't have access um, for a hard line connection. And so the next slide team started trying to figure out with the school district in terms of how do we bridge this gap and give access to people where the owners aren't letting us access the buildings. And then that's where they brought in Ron. And um, we came up with potential solution for a grant. Um, we were fortunate enough to receive that grant and then very quickly um, really close the gaps in connection in our community where we weren't able to get in on the hard line connection. With the pandemic, I think it became very apparent that not all students had equal and fair access to the internet. And we began having relationships with the school district. And we were also aware that there was some new grant money coming up from the state because everyone was becoming vastly aware of the need for internet for all. And so we alerted the uh, school district that there was an opportunity. So we partnered with them on a grant application for a wireless network so that we could partner and fill in some gaps uh, for the students. We have a network that is incredibly ubiquitous. 
and the city, but we've also learned that not all families and students are comfortable connecting to the internet in the same way. Um, some students have housing insecurities and they may be moving from one location to another. So we felt it was really important to partner with them to get a service that worked for all students and all family types. Currently, the network that we have covers roughly 35 to 40 percent of the city. More importantly, it probably covers 60 to 65 percent of the student base that we have here with, you know, where those students live today. And we're targeting really those areas and neighborhoods where we're seeing lesser of a penetration and we're wanting to make sure that those people that have been reticent to call us and sign up for traditional internet service. So we're making sure that we look at those heat maps and we really deploy the LTE radios deep into those communities so that people, our students, uh, families, all they have to do is go to the school district or to their teacher and ask to be signed up for the service. One of the things we learned um, during remote learning days of COVID is that learning doesn't just have to happen in the classroom during the school day. Um, and we've made a shift in our district that this network is benefiting. So for us, um, when we have days where inclement weather would prevent buses from bringing kids to school or when other events happen, um, we can move to remote learning days knowing that every teacher um, has access at home, every student has high quality access at home means that learning doesn't stop just because the weather doesn't cooperate with our transportation schedules. Uh, and so we prioritize kids, we prioritize learning, um, we prioritize the success that we know that they will have because um, learning is happening at home, at school, uh, during the summer, uh, all of those times are times um, is not just because of the, the speeds and the bandwidth, but it's because kids are learning. Uh, and for me, that's the highest priority. As we were starting this process, we also knew that because we had Next Light um, and we started talking about smart city components, that there was really a value off of the Next Light system that we hadn't really been able to put our arms around, but we knew it was there. And so we started examining how do we move in that world of smart city functions. But one of the challenges is that's a hardwired system. And so much of what we do as a city, uh, we have staff moving around. And so we really started looking at, you know, how do we bridge this gap? And what we found is that there were a lot of ideas coming from the smart city uh, standpoint that were just really hard to implement because we didn't have that robust communication system from a wireless perspective. And when you look at uh, the traditional Wi-Fi mesh network, the cost of that was just so high. So it seemed like every idea that was coming to us where it kept really hitting the brick wall was how do you have this broader communication piece that isn't dependent on a hardline connection. We had a wireless um, network here before that was Wi-Fi. I'd, I've been here for about three and a half years now. I think a year and a half into my uh, my tenure here, I, I I disconnected the Wi-Fi network. It wasn't um, it wasn't maintained. The equipment was antiquated. Um, it was very spotty around the city. It was driving some of the wrong behavior in the parks during the evening and stuff. And so we uh, we decided that Wi-Fi, because of all the foliage we have here, really wasn't going to be a very good technology to use we needed to do something other than that. The big use case for the city, it started off with the security cameras. This is a small community park here in Longmont, a young man that was uh, that was murdered here over the summer. And so this, this park had uh, an expressed interest to the community. This is one of the parks that the city manager wanted these, these security cameras deployed uh, to get uh, public uh, surveillance coverage um, for the safety of, of the community here. We actually started seeing issues in our community, um, different activities occurring where we had neighborhoods coming to us saying, we don't think our park is safe because of what's going on. And we knew that we needed a stronger presence. And so our public safety department started increasing patrols, but we also knew we couldn't do that in perpetuity. So the camera conversation came up in terms of how do we bring those into our parks? And, and what we really found is that this LTE solution was the crux of everything that has been challenging us as an organization, and that it was um, a lower cost option. 
uh, the bandwidth to carry multiple components and the sky's the limit in terms of what else we could add to this and you know we've already even started talking in our public safety department you know we have body cams we're going to have in-car cams and so we decided to make that move and because we knew we needed to move in a hurry but the security cameras have uh, ai built into it so there's a whole process as far as the product and the service that's that's used on the camera side it's able to to track uh, certain events and then if there are any events that that um that footage is captured and 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 law enforcement can proceed and then quickly dispatch those events to law enforcement for follow-up. With the experience that I have from the carriers, uh, you want a platform that allows you to completely manage the product, um, gain valuable uh, insights into the customer experience, you know, the network performance, network availability, and then the ease of deployment as far as both the core and the RAN. Um, so when you're evaluating uh, products for a private wireless, looking at buy cells, it checked all the boxes. So everything from manageability to being able to optimize and configure your network, it's extremely powerful. So all the carrier class features that you get with other vendors, you, you have that functionality with buy cells. So um, it was very attractive. And then of course, you know, the cost makes sense. It aligns with standard IT pricing in the industry. So not just from the pricing side, but also on the technical side, some of your integrations with multiple EPCs. So you don't have to just use one EPC. You can tunnel back to, towards a third party EPC and be very successful at it. So it's a very open platform where you can do everything with buy sells or you can have a mix and match depending on what works best for you. So it just it just works works out great. Actually, I think the, the work that the buy sells brought into this in the fact that we own the system is the game changer and the fact that what buy sales is doing is giving us the bandwidth that we need so we're not having to pay these commercial rates that gives us uh, system integrity in terms of what we're transmitting over the system and so we can look at our community and go we know this is safe uh, we know it's not on these other systems and what the buy sale technology is allowing us to do is to to really just add and as long as we know we have the bandwidth and we're not sharing it um, to a large extent, it, it's just giving us so many opportunities that I don't think we envisioned nine months ago or when did we, a year ago. This has kind of been a whirlwind of a project. Thinking about um, what it took to bring in, in just less than a year, um, almost 30 sites online and giving our students uh, that access, um, going from uh, just a concept to implementation to actually access uh, and giving those students that access in less than a year has been a pretty amazing project uh, to see come forward. And you know, the success that I see in this network, um, we don't hear from kids that they don't have access so their access is in high quality when uh, a teacher's uh, video is being shared across, uh, you know, one of our, our web streaming platforms. We don't hear it, kids saying that I can't access that because my network is too slow or because I don't have access. Every kid has access to high quality learning because of programs like this.